Good morning and welcome to our service in commemoration of VJ Day on this 15th of August 2020. A warm welcome to our dignitaries gathered here in person and a warm welcome too to all watching at home. You are most welcome. Thank you for joining us. Peace to you from God who is our Father. Peace from Jesus Christ who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit who gives us life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. worship God, who is good and just and true. He created and sustains the world and loves us, though we have failed him. Remember all who mourn and have given their lives in the struggle for justice and peace. All who suffer in war and conflict and all who live in terror. We ask for God's guidance and blessing that we may do his will and that all peoples may acknowledge his kingship and reign. This I call to mind and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord shall never cease. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Reading from Psalm 91. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High and abides under the shadow of the Almighty shall say to the Lord, my refuge and my stronghold, my God, in whom I put my trust. You shall not be afraid of any terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, of the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor of the sickness that destroys at noonday. Though a thousand fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, yet it shall not come near you. Your eyes have only to behold to see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your stronghold, there shall no evil happen to you. Neither shall any plague come near your tent. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Amen. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. I tell you, my friends, do not fear those who kill the body, and after that can do nothing more. But I warn you whom to fear. Fear him who, after he has killed, has authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sell for two pence? Yet not one of them is forgotten in God's sight. But even the hairs of your head are all counted. Do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. He said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. 
They have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? If then you are not able to do so small a thing as that, why do you worry about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet, I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothed, clothed the grass of the fields, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not keep striving for what you are to eat, what you are to drink, and do not keep worrying. For it is the nations of the world that strive after all these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, strive for his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains, and shall be raised up above the hills. War must be, while we defend our lives against the destroyer who would devour all. But I do not love the bright sword for its sharpness, nor the arrow for its swiftness, nor the warrior for his glory. I love only that which they defend. So wrote J.R.R. Tolkien in The Two Towers, the second Lord of the Rings volume. Tolkien knew all about war. He'd served in the first war, and would later say, one has indeed personally to come under the shadow of war to feel fully its oppression. Well, as someone who has not come under that shadow personally, whose knowledge of war is mostly from the history books, from the films and the dramas, it would be easy for people of my generation to shy away from the reality of the world wars. What I watched as a teenager in Tenko and those annual repeats of the bridge over the River Kwai sanitised as much as they presented the sufferings of those who found themselves against the imperial armies of Japan. Here, indeed, was wickedness, brutality and evil. But it wasn't restricted to just one side. As we know, the war ended abruptly at the cost of the civilian populations of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. In war, everyone is brutalized. Everyone suffers, sooner or later. The veterans who can never forget. The loved one left only with memory. The civilians with recurring nightmares of bombs and ill treatment. And into such darkness, our readings from the Bible might seem jarring. How can anyone believe God after the violence we saw in the last century and since, of the ongoing bloodshed brought into our homes in the nightly news? God's promises seem hollow at best, a joke played upon innocent humanity for thousands of years. But we forget that war existed when these biblical verses were written, at the time of Jesus, there were ongoing insurrections against the Roman Empire by what we would now call terrorist groups. And indeed, religion has been accused of causing war and misery for thousands of years. But religion doesn't cause war. People do. People who want what they do not have, money and land, power and prestige and will take it by force if necessary. And yet the people who fight the wars do so out of a sense of duty, of honour, of doing the right thing, 
and they indeed served valiantly. The 1st Battalion of the East Yorkshire Regiment served in India and Burma during the Second War in that Eastern Campaign. These men defended our way of life at great cost, and it is right that when today we remember their sacrifice and commemorate them and all of war. We must remember them and all victims of war as we pledge as individuals and nations to seek peace and pursue it for all who this day are still suffering injustice and violence. While war must be, may we always remember its human cost. Continue to reflect in our time of prayer. <clears throat> Let us pray. Let us, in honesty of heart, seek the Lord's renewing grace to deepen our wisdom and our peace and to equip us as instruments of his kindness. God of goodness and truth, we offer our broken spirits for your healing, our searching for your guiding light. God of light, you desire that all your people should live in your peace. Grant us the humility to seek your forgiveness and the will to practice it in our dealings with others. Help us in days to come to seek the good of the world, to work for the increase of peace and justice, and to show tolerance and open-mindedness towards those whose character and customs differ from ours. Grant that our remembrance this day may be consecrated for practical service and the world made better for our children's children. Receive our prayers for the well-being of all people, especially those who mourn and are sad, and for all in distress, both known to us and unknown, and oppressed people everywhere. Hear us for the peace of the world, for the wise resolution of conflicts, and the release of captives. Grant that the people of the world may do your will and live in your spirit. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as your people together, we join saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Would you please stand in the full dream? Let us remember the kindness of God and his favour to us in our time of need. Let us remember the courage, devotion to duty and the self-sacrifice of the men and women in our armed forces.
the toil, endurance, and suffering of those who are not in uniform. The support of those who sent us help from afar, or came and stood by our side. Let us remember those who were wounded in the fight. Those who perished in air raids at home. Those who fell in battle and are buried at sea or in some corner of a foreign field. And especially those whom we've known and loved, whose place is forever in our hearts. Let us remember those who were our enemies, whose hearts and homes are as bereft as ours whose dead lie also in a living tomb of everlasting remembrance. Let us remember those who came back, those whose lives still bear the scars of war, those who lost sight or limbs or reason, those who lost faith in God and hope for humanity. Let us remember the continuing grace of God, whose love holds all souls in life to whom none is dead, but all are alive forever. They shall grow not old, as we that are left to grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will.
mercy have gathered from the storm war into the peace of your presence. May that same peace calm our fears, bring justice to all peoples, and establish harmony among the nations. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. When you go home, tell them, mothers, and say, for their tomorrow we gave our today. Let us commit ourselves to responsible living and faithful service. Will you strive for all that makes for peace? Yeah. Will you seek to heal the wounds of war? We will. will you work for a just future for all humanity? We will. Merciful God, we offer to you the fears in us that have not yet been cast out by love. May we accept the hope you have placed in the hearts of all people and live lives of justice, courage and mercy through Jesus Christ, our risen Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Thanks to a late change in the guidance from our government, we are able to have the national anthem sung to us this morning. Thank you, John. this service this morning. God, God, grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the queen, the commonwealth, and all people, unity, peace, and concord, and to us and to all God's servants, life everlasting, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always.